and now we go into the mission aftermath. So basically what happens after you successfully win a mission is you take your mission card and you flip it on over and now it is a fragment. Then you get a number of random fleeting fragments equal to the number of saints. And you add those. One, two, three. And then everybody gets to pick one and they slot it into their halo if they want. Or they can get rid of a death that they have not yet slotted into their halo. So Frank Block can't do nothing about this death he already has, but he could use it to get rid of one if he was dying during the scenario. So let's take a look at these and then we will see who gets what and uh, we'll do our final wrap up. This is actually really cool. Um, I had a chance to look at some of these fragments and some of them actually fit together pretty well. So I'm going to read them all to you, the story part, and then we're going to talk about uh, what I decided to keep. So this is the one from the mission, the book. You don't know why you're still carrying it around. The thing must weigh five pounds and you only have so much space in your backpack. It's not even a whole book, just a tattered piece of water stained printout. But you read it when no one's looking, and at night you lie awake with that piece of story stuck in your head like a song. You wonder how it started. You wish you knew how it would end. So, this one's the ability, um, when, during the assemble step, sacrifice this to add one bonus die for each fleeting fragment in their halo. If they fail the check, they sacrifice one random fleeting fragment. This one's definitely going to Diana Jones, because I want this for her... Um, because she's really good at manipulating dice, and now she's going to be able to add more bonus dice to her check using this. And you know what's funny? She's gotten all of the, the mission-related cards so far. I wonder if they're just meant to go together that way. All right, and then we have the dragon. The needle slides into your vein, and you push the plunger down, forcing the glowing green fluid inside. It coagulates there, emerald lines forming along your capillaries and blending together into a cyclone fence pattern. The holes in your fence fill in and harden, transforming your limb into an armored black-nailed claw, and a golden eye in your palm flickers open and transfixes you with its hate. That one's pretty cool. Um, I'm really thinking of giving that one to Frank, but I want you to see these other ones. The Dead Weight. Falling, you regretted jumping from that building. You could see that your reaction was a bit extreme. But how else were you to address these new developments? How else could you have interpreted their meanings? If not flying, what were these new wings for? And the abrupt finish. The lights of the taxis crawl through the city's veins, tiny white and red blood cells pulsing to the pulse, pumping to the pulse of the traffic lights. You tilt your head as the warm air thrums past you, filling your ears with a dull roar. The taxis are growing more distinct as you approach. Bumpers and tires and windshields and occupants coming into view. You've been falling for a long time. These are all pretty cool. I like these. So this one, sacrifice to reroll any number of dice, then re trash the rerolled odd dice. That's a little scary. This one, sacrifice to avoid then move. That one's a little boring. This one's sacrifice to move and then draw one card. Actually, I think I want to give this one to Frank because he has a small hand size. So being able to just draw one card might be very useful for him. Um, so we are going to give this one to Frank, the abrupt finish. And then I guess we're going to give the dragon over to River here. And then they can reorganize their halos next time. So for now, I'll just put all their cards that were in their halo is all sort of in a pile there. All right, last thing we're gonna do, um, this goes back into the box. So last thing we do is we go through everybody's deck and first you take out any cards that were underneath the saint that were buried and you get rid of all of the omens and anything that is not a gift or a fragment. And then you get to rebuild all of the decks based on what you have and based on your saint's 
uh, sort of deck building requirements. So we are definitely going to go through that in the video. So you'll see how it's done. So um, basically I've organized everything out and the number of cards of each type, each um, virtue you're allowed to keep is equal to the virtue score of your saint um, matching that virtue. So for instance, Diana Jones has five mind cards. She can only keep three. Frank has three and he can keep three. River has three, he can keep two. We picked up a few extras during the mission. Same thing with soul cards. A lot of them have a lot of extra soul cards. And then we've got a couple extra rage cards as well. I think maybe they just got passed around though because River should have three. Um, Diana should have two and Frank should have four and right now Frank's got six so if he just gives one to each of the other people that'll do it so he really wants to keep the ones that have the strike keyword um, but particularly the reusable ones so he wants this gar garlic salt shot for sure um, I think he likes the pearl handled revolver as well um, and the murder board he doesn't care that much about. He wants to keep the switchblade. And you know what? He'll keep an extra razor blades as well. And that way he can give the murder board to someone else, like maybe, I don't know, Diana. And the reason that he'd want to do that is because the murder board, actually you can't use it on yourself for its second ability. The first ability, the boost ability, you can totally use on yourself. But the second ability, you have to use it on someone else so she could use it on him and then he would get the advantage from it and so that means that the extra razor blades that's left would have to go to river and that's sort of how it works um so i picked up some new soul gifts so let's see what i want to do now i think the soul stealer would be a good choice for frank because it's got that strike and remember he's really good at strike same reason I want to keep the wickety whack sack for Diana because she's really good at sense. I don't really care that much about the lucky numbers for Diana, but I do want to keep this seer. And we've got some magic mason jars that we may or may not want to keep around. Um, definitely want to keep the resist for River. Um, this one's nice because it's a conjure. Um, and then we've got a couple of new things. Uh, the dream snare is a conjure and the grimoire is a conjure. Grimoire would be a really nice thing to have around. And um, actually dream snare would also be a really nice thing to have around. So it seems like uh, we've got these cards left that I could give to Diana if I wanted. So this one says assemble using body, discard to use soul instead. That'd be cool for her because her soul is four, but her body's only two. Um, this one lets you sacrifice it to flip a die. That's really cool. I don't know. Maybe I should keep that for um, River. But I could probably pick one up again pretty easily because that's a basic kind of card. And then these are nice for Diana because the Magic Mason Jars have a sense. So let's give her a Magic Mason Jar. And, um, hmm... Therapy Dog is pretty cool. Um, keyhole Necklace. Maybe I should give that. Let's see. Evaluate versus an ally gift or a fake card. Sacrifice to add plus six. No, he needs to keep that. He needs to keep all of these really cool cards. So unfortunately, we're going to be getting rid of one of these. Um, she's already okay at flipping dice, but um, being able to flip another die would be pretty cool. So I guess she's going to keep this Madame Rue's Elixir. And we'll get rid of the other cards for now. And then we have to deal with, well, we haven't done body yet, so let's deal with body. She's got two body cards. She's pretty happy with them. He's got three body body cards, and he's pretty happy with those. Um, and he has two body cards, and I guess he's pretty happy with those as well, because this is a conjure and a resist, and this is a resist as well. Um, 
yeah, I think that would be a good way to handle it. So we will keep everything how it is for body. Then finally we have the mind, and we picked up some new mind cards. Um, the Camera Obscura was one of them. I think Monstropedia was one of them. For um, Diana, like I said, I want to keep those sense cards around. That's really her big thing um, in terms of how I'm building her deck. Uh, with River, I want those resist cards, but also those conjure cards. So I think this prayer wheel he definitely needs to keep in his deck. Um, let's see. This one is Conjure. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. We'll, we'll keep this Mondrian cell. I don't know, but the Worry Beads, no, that's got the resist on it. So he can he's going to keep the prayer wheel and the Worry Beads, I think. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so this Mondrian cell uh, has to go to somebody. Or it doesn't have to, but it could. And then we have Bones, and we have another Mondrian cell. So let's see. Memory Stick is pretty versatile and useful. Uh, this is pretty cool because it happens when you assemble using Rage, but it's to use Mind instead. So actually, that's not that great. Um, hmm... We're not going to keep the Monstropedia. We can pick it up again later. So, this is the hack ability. And she's got hack, so that's better than nothing for her. So we'll keep the memory stick in Diana's deck. Which leaves... Um, we need three for him. And I think that's it. So we'll just take these three. Um, the memory killer... Yeah, he definitely wants the Memory Killer that's a healing ability, but I think he's going to get rid of the Bones, and he's going to take the Wolfram Cube instead, and the Mondrian Cell. Because the Mondrian Cell is that really cool one that lets you um, reduce the target of, an, uh, of a check. And the Wolfram Cube is pretty cool, because it's reusable, and it lets you add dice. So I think we're good on that. And we'll put these other cards back in the box. So that is the um, Apocrypha Adventure card game. And then what you would do on the next scenario is first you would take your um, fragments and any deaths that you have and slot them in spaces around your saint so that you know how their abilities are going to apply. Add random omens to each saint's deck equal to this omen number on each saint. Um, and then you set up the scenario according to the rules of the scenario. And then you just keep going and you keep getting a little bit better cards. You keep getting a little bit better fragments once you get into the real meat of the game. Which is um, in this box it's the Skinwalker chapter. But at the later boxes are going to have I think four chapters each. Uh, in them, so they're going to be huge and full of content. Once you get into that, you actually start getting permanent um, fragments that you can slot into your Halo instead of one-time use abilities. So that's when it gets really interesting. But for now, uh, for Crystal Mephistopheles, for sure, that's all she wrote.